Today, we are exploring this Wi-Fi AH bridge. Wi-Fi AH use sub 1 gigahertz bands. It is low power, low bitrate, and perfectly suited for IoT applications. The device is delivered with this flat Ethernet cable, as well as a power supply. The power supply, while using a DC barrel plug, delivers, in fact, 5 volts which is very convenient because it makes us able to build this adapter and power it through this USB cable. Now, you may rightfully wonder what is this weird cable. It's just a USB cable where I did split the plus line in order to be able to make a measurement using this tool, which will tell me how many amps are going into the device. Side note, I sometimes call those USB to Ethernet dongles NIX for network interface controllers. Now, let's test if everything is working. I am going to try these cables that I manufactured by plugging it into this USB hub that only delivers 5 volts, 2 amps. And this Ethernet cable is going to give access to that part of the bridge to my home network and by extension to internet. This second part of the bridge is going to be plugged to my PC and the goal of the test is to check how much megabits I can get by accessing internet through that bridge. By the way, there's two hidden buttons on those bridges. You can change them from station to access point and use these little buttons to pair them together. My Wi-Fi card has been disabled and I'm only accessing internet through that bridge. So, can you guess? What bitrate I could expect? Well, because the two devices are very close to each other, I'm getting the maximum theoretical speed that I can expect from that bridge, which is 15 megabits, which translates roughly into 1.8 megabytes. I understand that it may sound a bit underwhelming, but it is in fact plenty enough for IoT application. However, what could not be enough would be the efficiency, because some IoT appliances are running off solar or even just batteries. My device was reading 111 milliamps at 5 volts. It means that one end of the bridge is only consuming half a watt. It is very power efficient. This part of the bridge is going to stay on this table connected to my home network. So the part of the bridge is going to come with me and we're going to do some tests on the go. First, I tried to drive around with that bridge connected to my phone and I quickly discovered that I was losing connectivity as soon as I was driving off the property. I was overconfident into the technology and a bit deceived by the performance, but part of it could be that my car acts as a Faraday cage. Later that day, I went out again. When running a test inside the car, 44 feet or 15 meters away from the access point, I'm getting roughly the same performance. Let's pack up and go further away. Now I am standing 485 feet or 150 meters away from the access point. Again, it is indoor and I'm getting more than one megabit. And this is the last test I ran. I was 860 feet away, or 260 meters. I was getting one megabit down, two and a half up. So roughly the same bitrate as before, but it's to be expected because nothing was added to the line of sight. There was no more cars or buildings. By making this video, my intention is to push the general public, but also researchers, towards using Wi-Fi AH more. Because I do think it's a great technology and it's filling a significant gap, um, especially for IoT applications. Right now, there's not a lot of uh, manufacturers of both the bridges, the devices, but also the modules. And it will only increase if the demand increases. Um, there's two products that are m worth mentioning. There's more powerful bridges uh, right now, uh, but they are sold at uh, 150 per unit. And there's also devices that support Wi-Fi mesh. So you can have a dozen of devices covering a wide area, making up for a single network and 
that makes up for a system that is resilient even if one device or multiple device fails because it's doing mesh networking. So this is very exciting. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, everyone should use it, but there's definitely a lot of new things that can be done and that couldn't be done before Wi-Fi AH, or at least not at the same cost. So if you do use Wi-Fi AH in your projects, please let me know. I would love to hear it. Bye.